Finally, in scalloped potatoes, we've got a lot of butter, a lot of milk or cream and cheese. So this was a little bit of a challenge, eliminating all of those things because I am 100% plant food um, chef with no added salt, oil or sugar, and I'm also gluten free. So um, this turned out really good though. So the first step is we're going to get our, we're going to make our sauce. And we're going to do that in the Vitamix here or whatever kind of blender you have. And the sauce, so we're not going to use cheese or butter, but we still need richness, right? So we're going to use the good old cashew, the unsalted, unroasted cashew. Um, half cup, which I have been soaking in two cups of water. And I'm just going to pour that into my Vitamix. Oh, I see the FedEx man out front. All right, so I'm gonna to add to that one tablespoon. Oh, and by the way, if you don't have cashews, you can use another kind of nut or seed that works for you. Uh, cashews are really nice because they're white, so it's easy to, they're just like a blank slate. And if you want like a white creamy sauce or a light colored creamy sauce, they work really well. They're also a really soft nut as compared to like an almond, which is kind of a hard nut. Um, I would say, I, I always like to give alternatives to people who don't use nuts or seeds or they're trying to watch their calories. But for this, you, you do have to have some kind of fat um, to mimic this dish in particular. I made this yesterday and I see I missed a spot um, on my pan there. Um, so you do need some kind of fat. Otherwise, it's just going to be potatoes in flavored water. So you might as well do mashed potatoes. So you do need some kind of fat, even if it's not the cashews in particular. And then I'm just putting in one tablespoon, sorry, of uh, rolled oats. And that's just gonna help it give it more of a saucy, creamy effect. A little goes a long way. And then I'm gonna put in a half teaspoon of paprika. And this is the kind I'm using. You can find paprika anywhere. Um, but I'm just using the California paprika from Savory Spice, which is, uh, we have a store in town, the Savory Spice, but it's also online. And what this does is it gives a little bit of flavor, but it also gives the color of like slightly yellow cheese. So half teaspoon of that. And then we're going to put in a little bit of black pepper, about a quarter teaspoon, and I'm just going to estimate here. Okay, and then lastly, I'm going to put in one clove, one medium clove of garlic. And let me just set this down here for the moment. I always like to show my little garlic sleeve here. So I think this is two cloves. That's okay. So what you do with the garlic clove is you just put it in the silicone sleeve and you just roll it and that should release the paper or start to release it. Sometimes you can pick it off easily. If it doesn't come off easily, you can give it another roll. Okay, so this was actually three little cloves stuck together. Okay, and if you want, you can cut off that little end you don't want it in there. So that makes up about one medium clove. I'm gonna put that in there. And that is it for the sauce. And we're just gonna kind of let that soak for a moment while we get some other stuff ready. Now, the, the flavoring in this sauce is very up to you. If you wanted to add some poultry seasoning, for example, which is a very holiday spice, uh, urban spice blend, you could do that. It doesn't have poultry in it. Um, if you wanted it a little spicier, you could add some red pepper flakes. If you wanted it a little yellower, you could add some turmeric or some curry. So you could really spice it any way you like. This is a pretty mild spiced um, dish. So have fun with it. Um, so we're just going to let this sit here for a minute. You can even give it a quick little blend and break up those nuts a little to give them more surface area for that um, water to act on. 
So we're gonna get our onion ready. This calls for a half of a medium onion. I, I had this onion, it's pretty small, so I'm just gonna use the whole thing. And I didn't cut it yet because I thought he would just, learning moment here. Um, and this onion is so unusual. It has a flat bottom already, which is nice. So I'm gonna cut off one end. I'm gonna cut off the other end. And by the way, I'm using my eight inch uh, chef's knife, dragon. So once you get both ends cut, go down the middle. And then I'm just gonna peel away. It's usually like the first two layers. I usually do that layer and then I do this next layer because it's usually pretty papery. And if it looks funny still, like this one, take it off. That doesn't look great. This doesn't look, yeah, that looks okay. All right, so we'll go over here and we'll do the same thing. Okay. Now, I'm not gonna cut my onion with my chef's knife today just because I wanted to show you another option. So I've shown this before. This is my garlic chopper. It's a small little chopper. Uh, it's, it's a Tupperware chopper. It's on my website store if you're interested. And you just pull it like this. Since I only did one clove of garlic and it's going in the blender anyway, I'm not gonna use this for garlic today. But this does come with, well, it doesn't always come with. I think you have to buy these separately if I recall. This is the bigger chopper that you can chop onions in. This doesn't really work for onions. It's a little too small. It's really good for pretty much garlic. But you can take the lid from this one and put it on this one, and then you can chop onions in there. So I just wanted to show that to you. That's a uh, Tupperware item. And then a friend of mine recently told me about this, which is a Xylis, Z-Y-L-I-S-S, -S -S, which it's one of my favorite brands. They also make my little rotary cheese grater, grater that I put nuts in. And they just make really good quality stuff. And this is a, a different size. It's kind of between the other two that I just showed you. And I've, I've just started using it, but I really like it. But it's the same idea. You pull this, you can chop onions. I don't know, that one's probably a little big to chop garlic, unless it was a whole bunch of garlic. But you, I saw my friend make salsa in it, just so easy. So this is great. And is it on my website store? No, it should be, but it's not yet. I should add it on there. Okay, so if you're gonna use a chopper, go ahead and uh, help it a bit by giving your onions some rough chops first. And then just put it in there. And on the instructions for my recipe, I believe I say uh, onion slices. And you can do that. You can do nice thin slices or you can chop it. Either way works. All right, so once you got it all in there, we're just gonna pull on this. And the more you pull, the more finely it gets chopped. I wonder if I could show you while I do it. getting there. I want it a little bit smaller. That looks good. And I did not get a bowl out for that, so let me grab one. So we're just going to transfer this to a bowl. this out. You can use a sweet onion, you can use a non-sweet onion, red onion, white onion, yellow onion, it doesn't really matter. But since I've written that recipe, I kind of like the chopped like this a little bit better than the sliced. Oh, that's making my eyes water. All right. And this is a mandolin. And actually, let's go ahead and just turn this. that direction. Okay. All right. 
So this is the potato I'm using. It's a Yukon Gold potato. I have some already prepared, but I just wanted to show you. This seems to work best for scalloped potatoes. I did try using russet potatoes, but they are too starchy. They fall apart too easily. So definitely use a white waxy potato of some kind. Um, this is my favorite, the Yukon Gold. And this is also my favorite potato peeler. I just thought I would show you this. It's a white, it's called a white peeler. And it's just easier. I like it better than the more traditional straight peelers. It feels a little safer in my hand. It's great for um, peeling butternut squash. And Okay, so we do want to peel these. I mean, I guess you could leave it unpeeled, but I like mine peeled. Okay. And you know what? My nose always wants to run when I'm teaching. So I'm just going to give it a quick little blot over here. Sorry about that. Another real life moment for you there. All right. So our potato is peeled and ready to go. Now we're going to slice it. You can use a, um, a chef's knife. And you just want to make, you would want to make your slices very uniform and very thin, an eighth inch to a quarter inch. But the best way to do this is just to use a mandolin like this. And this is just one kind. This is a pretty inexpensive one, I think, um, maybe $40. And then these come out. So on this side, if you wanted to do a, um, a thicker, Piece, I'll show you. And then this pokes in on the potato, so it kind of grabs on. And you want to do it going lengthwise. So let me do another, let me do another one here. So this is kind of a, I don't know if you could see that very well, but that's more like a quarter inch. What we're going to do is flip it over to the other side. And you can tell, you can see the difference in size. So you definitely want to use that thinner size. And you always want to use your guard there. Okay. You can do it flat. Sometimes I'll hold it up because the stack underneath gets a little too tall. And then once you get to the very end, end up with this piece which you can use or toss either way all right so that is the mandolin it also comes with these other whoop, pieces if you want to do like julienne carrots or you want to make french fries having one of these around is great I don't use it all the time but I'm really glad that I have it in my toolbox okay so I already have a bunch of potatoes already sliced so I'm just gonna add these to it Now we're going to go back to our sauce here and we're just going to blend it up, finish it off. And then the last thing we're going to add to the sauce is some fresh thyme. Here it is. This is one way you buy thyme in the grocery store, just in these little bundles, or you can get them in the little plastic cl clamshells. And what you do with the thyme, and since it's the holidays, I do like to use fresh instead of dried for this. Um, so you just grab it near the top, and then you pull down, and you'll get all the little leaves off like that. And if you have herbs, you know, I usually buy a, a bunch of, like one bunch to use in one recipe. But if you want to preserve your herbs, get a little mug or a little small um, drinking cup or something, put a little water in the bottom and set this in it with a plastic bag over it and put it in your fridge and it will last so much more, so much longer. Okay. 
So I've already measured out my one tablespoon of thyme leaves here. And I'm going to add that in now. And I just want to blend it enough so I can still see some little green flecks in there. All right, so the first step of putting it together is just to put like two tablespoons or just estimate, put a little bit whoop, in the bottom. We don't need any parchment paper for this or anything special. There's going to be enough uh, liquid in there that it won't stick. So we're just going to coat the bottom. <laughs> it's tricky. If it's not coating fast enough for you, put in a little bit more. See how you can see those little green flecks? It's kind of nice. And you see the color? It does look kind of cheesy. Okay. All right, so once you've kind of coated the bottom, those certain spots just do not want to be coated. There we go. Okay. Then we're going to start laying in our potatoes. And if you do have some that are thicker than others, you could put those on the bottom because we're making the foundation of our house here. So, and what you want to do is just overlap them slightly. If you get any funny ones you don't want to use, just kind of put them to the side. We might use them later, but this is our foundation. So we want it to be nice and strong. You don't want to overlap too much because you don't want portions of uncooked potatoes there. And you see, if you cut them lengthways like this, you're going to have a lot less work um, laying them in because they cover more ground. So that one that I just didn't like so much, I'm going to put right here. Okay. Now we're going to add about a third of the onions. Just kind of estimate evenly here. And then we're going to add about a half cup of sauce on top of that. This is a half cup ladle, so I'm just going to use that. And because of the nuts in here and because of just that one little tablespoon of rolled oats, it's going to make a nice sauce. All right, so now we go again. Now this is the middle. If you have pieces that are a little irregular, or not the most beautiful, you can use them in the middle. Okay, I want some bigger ones here. Oh, that's that quarter, that quarter thick one. Maybe I won't use that one. Okay. Now you can use the smaller ones, you're just going to have to arrange them, put more of them in. Okay, back to the onions. We're going to put half of what's left in there. Okay, and then it's kind of like making a lasagna. All the layers, another half of the sauce. more of the potatoes. Right. What are you guys doing for the holidays? Are, I imagine a lot of you aren't getting together with family. Are you still going to make a holiday dinner at home or maybe a smaller holiday dinner? I still want to make a holiday dinner. I don't know what I'm doing for the holidays yet. I usually go to my mom's, but things just seem to be getting so much worse with this COVID. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll stay home with the kitties and watch Netflix. Okay, there's our next layer. And then the last of the onions goes on top.
All right, so now we're going to put the roof on the house. Now, one thing you can do, which I did in the example that I'm going to show you in a little bit here that I made yesterday, is instead of just putting these on like this, you can cut them in half lengthwise and have like little half moons if you want a more, whoops, I got to put the sauce on, a more decorative um, top. I'll show you what I mean in a sec. So another half cup. All right, so now we're going to put the roof on the house here. And I'm just going to do the same way that I've been doing. And you want to have the top look pretty nice. So you don't want any of your ugly pieces on the top if you can help it. All right. So we're going to go three across. And it looks like I'm going to have extra um, potatoes, and that's okay. I mean, you could do another layer, but I think I my thinking was I didn't want people to run out of potatoes, so I thought, it, you know, better a little extra potatoes than not enough potatoes. But if you want, you could just slice, you know, ready a, to a certain point of the potatoes, and then if you need more, you could slice more. we go. Okay. Ta-da. I think I need one more little piece right here. Do I? Maybe I don't. Am I worrying about it too much? Probably. Okay, there's a nice little piece. I like order. Okay. All right, so at this point, we're going to put the rest of the sauce over the top. What you are going to be left with is about a cup. Maybe I should just pour this. A cup of the sauce. And we're just going to put that over the top. And this, again, this looks watery, but it will creamy up. So have no fear. Oh, that looks good. I also have another recipe on my website, um, similar, but it has sliced mushrooms and Swiss chard, I believe. No, spinach, basil, onions. It's really good too. It's called, I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> Mushroom basil au gratin, maybe? Okay. So at this point, it is ready to go into the oven. And I'm going to cover it with some aluminum foil. If you don't want, some people don't like the aluminum foil facing their food or definitely not touching their food because aluminum isn't good for health. Um, what you can do is put down, cut a piece of parchment to kind of just lay on top, not touch the food, but just kind of lay on top and then put the aluminum foil over it. Uh, there is a product, I believe, by Reynolds Wrap that has aluminum on one side and parchment on the other already stuck together. But today I'm just going to use the aluminum foil because I don't want to take the time to cut that right now. And then just seal it, or seal it around. This is going to help ensure that those potatoes get cooked all the way through. And we're going to bake this and kind of, kind of do seal it up around the edges. It's probably not going to boil over because it's still got room up in that pan. But let me just remind myself of how long this takes. 45 minutes, and then we're going to remove the foil or the cover. If you have a, a Pyrex pan that has a cover with it, a Pyrex cover, a glass cover, you can use that. So 45 minutes, then we're going to remove the cover and we're going to put it back in for about 10 minutes so some of that liquid can kind of cook off. And then it'll be done. And if you want to brown the top, because it probably won't be brown really that much at that point, you can just put the broiler on and give it like three to five minutes. All right. So I'm going to put this in the oven. 
375. And I'm going to set my timer for 45 minutes. Okay. And if at the end of the 45 minutes, your potatoes are still pretty firm, you can put it in for another 10 minutes with the cover on five to 10 minutes. Um, you definitely want your potatoes tender and cooked when all is done. You don't want them to be m too mushy yesterday. yesterday. So here's a finished piece. Put it in the microwave just for a minute, but it's not really hot. Um, just to show you what it looks like. And I did put it on the broiler for about three or four minutes. And you can see it kind of bubbles up and it gets nice and brown and crusty on the top. This has been in the refrigerator overnight, so it looks awfully stiff. Um, but it looks, it looks pretty. And then I don't know if you can see... Um, kind of see in there. I don't know if you can see that. There's like little creamy layers in there. Whoop. And then you can see where I cut those potatoes in those half moons, which is optional. So when yours comes out of the oven, I would give it like five minutes or so to just kind of settle. So don't serve it right away because it'll be too wet. It just needs a five to 10 minutes just kind of settle in and what's the word congeal I don't know uh, so you can serve it just like that when it's hot and or you can put a few cashews into your rotary cheese grater and do my little trick of the fake like cheese on top or you can do that on the whole um, casserole dish when it comes out if you want to give it a more cheesy look optional and you can also if you want to do a little garnish you can just put some little thyme leaves on top you can do this on the whole the whole dish or as you're plating your food 